do not count the king's wives because we believe that every woman belongs to him. Uh, <laughs> he's a lucky man, eh? Count every woman belongs to the king. hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl i'm smiley and i'm back with a new video ah thank you guys thank you so much for always being here even when i'm not posting like guys my subscribers have been adding up and i haven't been posting like literally thank you guys so today welcome to the busy streets of kampala uganda where traffic and border border is the order of the day but there's also a beautiful side to eat yeah guys always where there is a good there's also the bad so let's focus on the good side of uganda where one thing i love about kampala or let's say uganda in general it's the way they have reser reserved nature everywhere you go from the village to the middle of the city you can just see mother nature gazing at you with its beauty like they have just made sure that you don't get to cut trees like you want to like even if they, you are building like you don't touch the trees guys everywhere like literally you can see this is kampala town and trees are everywhere it's green the chance to visit a king's palace and the king is Kabaka Ronald Mwenda Mutebi II in Kampala and the place is rich in history guys yo just sit back relax with your popcorn or your drink soda or juice cause ah you're about to be entertained for the next like 20 minutes so sit back, relax, and be attentive. The history class is about to begin. Yep. And you have it, and if you haven't subscribed, guys, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up for more beautiful and more educating videos like this one. So now we have entered the King's Palace. <laughs> But now he stays where? He has other palaces. Ah. So between him and Museveni, who is uh, the higher authority? Uh, who is, is, who is powerful? The king is cultural. Uh, because the king does not participate in partisan politics. Yeah. But he's very influential. Uh, similar to Britain. Yeah. Uh, so, influential. so the kingdom is one of the oldest kingdoms we have in the east and central of Africa. Mm. It has been in existence the past 800 years. The country is Uganda, the kingdom is Buganda, and the language is Luganda. Mm. If you realize that we don't have Kiswahili. Yeah. yeah our language is Luganda. Luganda. Yeah, the atrocities of Idi Amin and Obote uh, made us to hate Kiswahili. Mm. Because here we know Kiswahili is the language for the soldiers. Language for the soldiers. Oh. So even today, when you go and study military, Kiswahili mm. is their language. Okay. Yeah. So they used to uh, they used to actually uh, use threatening and harsh Kiswahili. 
even today when it comes to arresting the police use this mm. so we take this so here to be <laughs> Yeah. Bad okay. You can be communicating with the policeman in Uganda. Comes to arresting, he changes to speech Swahili. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, uh, maybe sure. talking about you. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they are talking. Touching me. My friends. Yes. We take it to be not good language. Is there all of them? Yeah. The king is the custodian of culture. Okay. He's the custodian of culture here in Uganda. Kabaka mm. uh, Muina Mutebi, the current king, is one of the most respected men we have in Uganda. Yeah. And very influential. People have a bigger ear to the king at times more than the president. Mm. And he has a wife? Yes, the king has a wife. The wife's yeah. name is? It's called Nabagereka. Mm. We do not count the king's wives. Because we believe that every man belongs to him. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> He's a lucky man, eh? Culture, culture every man belongs to the king. Ah. Yeah. Okay. We be, even us now we belong to the king. Yes. <laughs> if he likes you, don't tell you that you're gonna be my wife or what. He just takes you. you. Like a property. Polygamy in Africa was not a sin. Mm. What made it, what made polygamy to look like a sin was Christianity and his religion. Yeah. Especially yeah. yeah. Christianity. Yeah, yeah. Mm. because we Muslim we are okay with polygamy. Uh, one of the ways in Africa to give respect to a man they could depend on how many wives you had. Mm. The more number you had, the more respect. The more respect. Yo! So they had more women to be respected in the... By that time, talked about the, the, the king's wife. But by that time, kingdoms were abolished. Mm. Was it was abolished, right? Eh? It was aborted. Aborted for you. Yeah. So, uh, Idami took over from Obote, or he took over from U U U seven, I think so. Even uh, Idami again. took over from Obote. Then Obote came back for the second time and took over from Idami. Then, oh, the second time? Yes, Obote ruled Uganda for two times. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was, it was, it was, uh, yeah. So, this so, kingdom is clan based with 56 clans. Each clan with a symbol which we call a totem. So, we have 56 totems. Some totems are animals, some are plants, some are insects, others are birds. In our culture, if your totem is edible, you cannot have it as food. We have edible totems. Like people come from the mushroom clan, they can't eat mushrooms. Mm. People from the sheep, they can't eat sheep. People from the grasshopper, they can't eat the grasshopper. People mm. from the langfish, they can't eat langfish. This culture is still respected up to date. Even when it comes to marriage, you have to marry outside wow. your clan. Mm. Any person whom you share a clan with, were genealogically related to that person. Mm, even us. That's African. Country. That's African. <laughs> yeah, uh, children are paternal, they take the father's genes. Yeah. Mm. Though so they still have to respect their mothers. Yes. If you're a man and you marry from your mothers, you can't be married to your mom. That's mm. what we believe. So any person who shares a uh, clan with your mom, even if he's a young girl, the respect you give to your mom is the same respect you give to so you don't marry them. <laughs> you don't marry them. Uh, For you, you can? Yes, you can marry from the clan of your mom. Yes. Only from the father's tribe, I can't. You have to deduct two clans. So there are 56, you remove two. Mm. One of your mom and the one of your dad. But you can mm. go back, uh, you can marry from your grandmothers. Mm. That one can reverse. Only mother and father. Only mother and father. Others now. Others are okay. So, uh, children, they take the fathers. Uh, and again, we don't have a ruling clan. All clans are equal. Mm. There is no clan which is superior. There is no clan that the king should come from this clan. Mm. No. Uh, clans are equal. Uh, kingship is, for it is unique, kingship is maternal. The king takes the mother's clan here. Since mothers keep on changing, also kingship varies clan to clan. That's why in our culture, Buganda, we have a belief that every woman belongs to the king. It was not just done for design, but they had intentions. These men were wise. Now, if the king could marry a woman from a particular clan, and that woman gives birth to a boy's son, that boy's son can compete with the throne. So for a king, actually, ancient kings, they could make sure that at least they marry a woman from each and every clan. 
create so for, for a king he can marry all yeah. uh, apart from that too he for also must have married for him he accepts only the mothers okay for, from the father side he can marry yeah from the father side it's okay but only the mothers yes only the mothers for others women belong to him yeah so uh that practice of marrying women from each and every clan could create an opportunity for that particular clan to give back to the king. Because in our culture here, first sons do not become kings. Yeah, the firstborn doesn't become king. The firstborn is given a title to be the caretaker of the entire family, but not to be king. Again, the firstborn is the chief advisor to the son who becomes the king. So they pick the successor from the second son to the last son. All the sons of the king have the opportunities to succeed in the throne. That's why in Uganda, see whether the son is qualified. So we never know what we're going to do. So the king makes a will. Again, the committee will sit and see whether the king's will. That son qualifies. So among the three sons in his will, he can outline like three of them. He can say, so and so is my favorite son. It fails, look at so and so. That one fails, please so, so and so. So the chief will weigh those three and see. So now the, the chief will see only on those three? Yes, so they will see on those three because there are many, many qualifications with the cost. So this is one of the oldest structures that we in Uganda constructed in 1922 and finished 1930. By that time in Uganda it was difficult to find a modern house. It was, called, it was built by King Daudi Chua. It was the king who came on the throne when he was just one year old. Mm. He was even given reagents to open decision making. At the age of 17 he moved to Europe. It's why he was amazed at the modern structure. Mm. It was the king who allowed girls to go to school. Uh, he was more British because he was raised by the British. He visited the Buckingham Palace, that's why he bought this fashion from. So uh, this gentleman, uh, all this was in the colonial era. He was the king allowed girls to go to school, women treat eggs and chicken. Eggs and chicken are only men here in Uganda. <laughs> yeah. We believe that if a lady eats eggs and chicken, she cannot bear children. <laughs> Those are in Africa, right? Many myths. I'm sure many societies still have myths. Yeah. Someone does this. This will. Yes. Yeah, so, those among the myths. So, when he visited Britain, so ladies eating like the chicken and nothing happened to them. So, when he came back, he allowed them. So, he died and he was buried in Kasubi. Kasubi is where the last talking of her. Then, Kamutesa, Uganda's first president, became the last king to stay here. You're going to go to independence on 9th October 1962 and Kabaka became the president. Independent from, from British, yeah. From British, yeah. Became yeah. sometime king, sometime president. Served for only three years and got misunderstandings with Pote. Pote was the prime minister. Then the prime minister ordered Ida Amin, who was the chief military commander, and Ida Amin attacked here. Kingdoms were even abolished. We spent 27 years without having kingdoms. Kingdoms are brought, being brought back by the government of seven. It was a way of giving thanks. But the Pope gave him the hand of coming to power, specifically the Pope of Uganda. So the current king has been on the throne for 31 years. It's called Kabaka Ronald in the II. So here we have had only three kings. Daudi Chahu built this place. Mutesa to the last king to stay here. And the first king was called Mwanga, though this was not his palace. For it, it was in an ancient way. It was in grass. Actually, it's the man of the Uganda matters. And who pays the king? The king is a very rich man, no need to pay him. Well, because it is hereditary? Yes, this, herit uh, this heritage and uh, it is hereditary. Uganda is occupying the central part of Uganda. You can find Uganda along the northern central towards of Lake Victoria. And more than that, in the culture of the kingdom, the king is the land. So you find if, uh, that even the king can rent out land to the government, the government pays for it. That, yeah, that is what uh, is happening there in, in, in South Africa. They got this king for Zulu. Yeah. But the government pays him every month. 
I like a place that he do have his own power. Yeah. He got his own powers like this. But the hours, the but he is paid. Rejected the payments. Okay. <laughs> he rejected them. Yeah. The government was willing, but for him to say no, 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 no. The only person who goes straight. Yeah. Oh, it's not go round in the street. Oh. 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 He found the palace being used as a barracks and he continued using it for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Amin was a close friend to Kano Muama Gaddafi of Libya. When he heard rumors that Oboto was planning a coup against his government, Idi Amin ran for Gaddafi and he collected some support of military tools and this was one of them. These weapons were quite many here, but in the kingdoms were reinstated, others were shifted and were taken by the government. This was retained back because it was no longer working and acted as a memory that the palace was once a barracks. Yep. So this is Idi Amin's gun. Mm. This gentleman in the late 50s who was recognized to be one of the richest men in Africa, who could drive very good and expensive vehicles. When Idi Amin attacked the palace, when he was still under the military, as the chief of the commander he was ordered by Obote to destroy whatever belonged to the king. Most of the king's cars were burnt, others were smashed using tractors in the back of the ground. These were just quick from how they were thrown and both from here. So these are different parts of different vehicles. On top of this club was a type of a Daimler Benz which was burnt. The Benz is sitting on a frame of the Adila. Then at the back we have a Rolls Royce. Mm. Oh wow. Yeah. Mm. 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 So the families you can surround here, these are the families of the soldiers who guarded the palace. When the kingdom was brought back, the government reached an agreement with the kingdom that the kingdom shall not own a private security board. So the kingdom always collects security from the government. The families of the soldiers who guard this palace, they live here. These mm. houses are built in the 1930s to be offices for the palace chiefs and the artisans. The kingdom has embarked on restoration with have quarters down that side. The restoration program has been ongoing. We expect it to shift the same things and do the same work. Come. Yeah. We're going to proceed to the torture chambers this side. <laughs> He became president in hired Israelis. In the world, Israelis are known to be good architects, they're very good engineers. So Idi Amin hired them and brought them here to construct for him a place when he could most of his weapons. He used this place only eight months, then he can go to September. That is capturing people whom he started to say he had been a they could arrest you wherever you are, they turn your arms at the back, blindfold you, pack you in the boot of the car, drive you around the town for some good hours, mm -hmm. mentally distract you so that when you reach you can't tell where you are. People who died in this side thought that they were falling from the city. Mm -hmm. They were still in the city. Yeah, they been driving around. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this made them unable to escape. No presidents used this place. It means up 1979. When Obote came back, Obote continued using the same place for the same purpose. As a revenge, it means his name.
But how did the Museveni put from Obote? It was a cook, stage 1986. Yeah. So this place uh, is depicted in the movie called The Last King of Scotland, which shows the life of Idi Amin. Yeah, yeah. So this is the standard way how his reign is built their armories. They hide them under ground. In case when the trap brings the weapon, it can get back in reverse form and you can straight up inside here. Yeah. So then we do the offloading of the weapon, it's just here. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why the king can't sleep in his bed. When Ida Amin was stopped for the rent back to his great friend Badat in Libya for a short time, he continued to Iraq again for a short time ended up in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. He died in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. Then he was taken and buried in Jeddah when I'm heading to Mecca. He was a Muslim. Yeah. Well, he's not even buried in Uganda. Mm -mm. Saudi. Among the doctrines of the Muslim religion, you die on a holy land. Mm -hmm. You're buried in a holy land. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, no, I don't think it's in No, many people wanted it, but the government rejected the idea. So, in the history of Uganda, actually, today when you put it, I mean, mm. you vote it and ask the people of Uganda to choose, they will choose it, I mean. Mm. Yeah. In the history of Uganda, is remembered to be one of the most patriotic presidents Uganda has ever received. Yeah, the only thing which he lacked was education. Yeah, not educated. Mm. We find that most of the people are comparing even his regime with the current regime. Yeah. The truck would come in a reverse form, would park on one of the cells, it opens up in the sides, with the offloading of weapons. The cells are strong sliding, those who operate on the cell. After eight months, trucks will move and enter the place of now for culture. This floor was filled with water. You can still see the water on the roof here. And this water was electric part. You can still see the electric cables running through the doors. After driving around the town, confused with the major standing, this water to the connect power. They extract up information from you. They could make you speak whatever they plan against the government. Some men were pushed inside the cell to the of 100 million one cell. What could kill them was the suffocation, serious torture, and hunger. When you manage to jump from a cell for the survive this cell to fight water. They bring fresh one, you can't even one inside, they bring out the one from the water, they start back the fresh ones. This cell has some writing. We did that when the who died and wrote them. They said, what do we use to write because the words are still in the world? The words are in Uganda, but in English they say, for what you killed me, how about my children? You could have left them fatherless. The security men could step into this water with their boots, so it became dirty and it was not changed regularly. So some men were dragged through this water before they were pushed inside the cells. This extreme last cell has the evidence of being a big sort of man. Yeah, <laughs> So, the police are shown here, they come for them at night. Most of them were dumped to the king's outside there. Many were buried in the mass graves within this palace land. Other bodies were thrown on the road to scare them from rioting. Many were thrown in Lake Victoria, in by the Nile Patch, others in River Nile. It's just a by the crocodiles. In Uganda, we have Makishon Falls National Park. Makishon has two species of crocodiles. One of them is the Nile crocodile. These crocodiles were located that side by the government because they were addicted to feeding on human beings. We humans will use a lot of salt. So our flesh seems to be tasty and seasoned to these animals. When animal runs on human flesh, they are not many. Stick. Human 
So they never ate anything. They are suddenly many for their own sins. Everything was an The river, most of the people, some of them are people who were exaggerated when was uh, president. Some of them exaggerated by someone else. So these people that also were taken that side of action. In action, they could easily change the diet yeah. since they are not humans. It becomes fast for human beings, food, hunter, or something else. So, you have many teacher places, this is just one of them. So, since you go as a developing country, most of them have been destroyed. Some are all business centers which are no longer visible. So, most of our visitors expect to blood about blood that was Today, we have bats. Those black spots, most of them are bats, droppings. Yeah.